grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a part of our reading today from Acts chapter 1. It says, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. One uh, nice thing about smartphones is that if you're stuck in the waiting room at the doctor's office for 30 minutes because they've fallen behind, with a phone, you can stay busy with good things. You can text a friend. You can read emails. You can read portals of prayer. You can get that on your phone. You can check the weather forecast or pay your electric bill. Some people, while they wait, could call their mom and say hello. Now, in our reading today from Acts chapter 1, the apostles are waiting. They're waiting on Jesus. Soon, the apostles will be going out to make disciples of all nations. But before doing so, Jesus told them to wait. Shortly before ascending into heaven, Jesus said to them, Stay in the city, stay in Jerusalem, and wait. Wait until you have been clothed with power from on high. So, in our reading today, from Acts chapter 1, the apostles are waiting on Jesus. After witnessing the ascension of Jesus into heaven, the apostles, the Bible says, return to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. They returned to the city and waited, waited to be clothed with power from on high, that is, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost. I'm not sure if the apostles knew how long they were going to have to wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. As it turns out, they waited 10 days. And while they waited, they stayed busy with good things. One thing they did while they waited is they prayed. The apostles all joined together constantly in prayer, the Bible says, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Now, prayer is a good thing to stay busy with, isn't it? What do you think they prayed about? Perhaps they prayed things like, O risen and ascended Lord Jesus, thank you for your mercy to us after we foolishly abandoned and disowned you in the Garden of Gethsemane. Perhaps they prayed something like this, O risen and ascended Lord, we praise you for your faithfulness in bearing the sins of the world on the cross of Calvary. Perhaps they prayed something like this, Thank you, Lord, for your glorious resurrection from the dead and for the 40 days of convincing proofs of that reality, your resurrection from the grave. Perhaps they prayed something like, Thank you, O Lord Jesus, for your promise to return in glory and raise us from death. The Bible says that they all joined together constantly in prayer. What do you think they prayed about? Well, one thing that for sure made it on their prayer list was asking God for his help and guidance in choosing a new apostle who would be a replacement for Judas Iscariot. They prayed, the Bible says, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. So that's another thing the disciples stayed busy with while they waited to be clothed with power from on high, going through the process of choosing a new apostle. Guided by what the Holy Spirit spoke through David in the book of Psalms, Peter wisely comes to the conclusion that it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us. One of these must become a witness with us. 
of Jesus' resurrection. While they waited in Jerusalem, Matthias was chosen and added to the eleven. In our reading today from Acts 1, the apostles are waiting on Jesus and staying busy with good things. Now what are you waiting on God for? Anything? You know, Christians may find themselves waiting on God for relief from some affliction in body or soul. Christians may find themselves waiting on God for guidance in where to go next in life. Christians may find themselves waiting on God to take them to heaven. For centuries, the whole church has been waiting on Jesus to return in glory and renew all things. Are you waiting on God for anything? Well, while you wait, stay busy with good things. Stay busy with the good things he has called you, his church, to do. You know, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And one of the things he's meaning with those mandates is stay busy with good things. When Jesus talks about staying connected to the vine and bearing abundant fruit, he means stay busy with good things. One reason Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer is because he's wanting us to stay busy, praying, praying with boldness and confidence. Don't be afraid to call God your Father. And when Jesus says to his church, you are the light of the world, he's meaning, one of the things he's meaning by that is, stay busy letting your light shine. And Jesus doesn't want us to grow tired of waiting on him. He wants us to believe that his timing in all things is perfect. Jesus doesn't want us to grow impatient with him, discouraged, hopeless, or despairing. He wants us to stay busy with the good things he has called you, his church, to do. Like the Bible says, you are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to be busy with the good things that he prepared in advance beforehand. For you to do. And you know, God himself knows what it's like to wait. In Eden, God promised Adam and Eve a savior, but thousands of years passed before the Son of God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. It was in the fullness of time, after waiting for the right moment in history, that God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. As one of us, Jesus, the Son of God, at times waited. And we would expect that he kept busy with good things. Already at age 12, Jesus amazed people with his knowledge of the scriptures and his insight, but he waited until he was about 30 to begin his ministry. And while he waited, we should expect that he was busy with good things, busy as an obedient son busy at the synagogue in Nazareth, busy as a good friend and neighbor to the people in Nazareth, busy doing the work of a carpenter. And although his enemies threatened him with death several times after his ministry began, only when the time was right did Jesus, for the joy set before him, go to the cross as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. And on the cross, Jesus died for all the times we've grown sinfully impatient with God because we were overcome by worry or hopelessness or despair. And Jesus died for all the times we've left undone his mandate to love him with our whole heart and love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus suffered the wrath of God in our place as our substitute for all the times we've foolishly been busy with evil things. Thanks be to God that for the joy set before him, Jesus patiently endured death by crucifixion for us and our salvation. The soul of Jesus had to wait in heaven until the third day to experience the joy of 
life in a resurrected body. But on the third day, Jesus rose from death. And today, our ascended Lord is waiting, waiting to return in glory. And while he waits, one of the things that he is busy with, the Bible says he is our advocate. He speaks to the Father in our defense. And when Jesus does return as judge of the living and the dead, your bodies waiting in the sleep of death, your bodies waiting in the grave will be over. The grave must obey our Lord when he calls you out of it. And like Jesus, our eternal souls will experience the joy of life in a resurrected body. That's what's going to happen to us on Judgment Day. When Jesus appears in his glory, we will be blessed with eternal and perfect healing in body, mind, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. In the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.